Welcome to Power Living by Ajay Almeida. In this channel, we talk about relationship, marriage, self-love, boundaries, and everything that takes you to the next level. So you are at the right place at the right time to receive some fantastic content today. If you have not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe right now and hit the bell icon and you will get my videos twice in a week. Now let's move ahead to today's topic. Now as a parent and also as a parenting coach, I often face this issue of toddler meltdown. Now what is a toddler meltdown? A time when a toddler is not able to face or understand or regulate their emotions. Now children as they're growing up, they still have a lot of brain to develop, which means that they are not organically capable of handling big emotions. What are big emotions? Anger, frustration, rage, sometimes even jealousy. So when the toddler, a child between the age of one to four, faces these emotions, he does not have the capacity to understand and regulate those emotions. And that's why the child throws a tantrum. He may roll on the floor, get angry, push people, or shout, or just be stubborn and not move from the place and all those funny things that toddlers do. Now, as a parent, our response to a situation when a toddler is throwing a tantrum is conditioned by what we faced when we were toddlers or what our parents did to us when we were toddlers. And we unconsciously follow the same pattern. Let me give an example. If your immediate response, when you look at your toddler who is rolling on the floor or is throwing a tantrum, if your immediate response is shouting at them, screaming at them, telling them to stop, most probably that was a strategy which you learned from your own parents when you did it as a toddler. Now definitely you might not remember it because we don't normally remember that phase of our life. But that is exactly how your parents have reacted to you and you have learned it. So that each time someone screams or a toddler screams, you automatically go back and do what your parents did. Some of us might tell, might just emotionally disconnect might just move away when a toddler is throwing a tantrum. Maybe that's what one of your parents did when you threw a tantrum. Some of us might even go and beat the child. Again, it's an automatic response. You feel guilty afterwards. In fact, you might even be thinking that, oh, I never wanted to do this. How did I do this? And you might feel guilty about it. That's because it's an automatic response. Needless to say, all of these responses are coming from fight, flight or freeze response which means that they are not well thought out responses. They are just immediate and irrational responses because of which what happens is your toddler will learn that his emotions are not important. His emotions are not valid. That the big emotions like anger and all of the frustration and all of that, these are wrong and one is not supposed to feel them. And he might also go in his shell and think that, okay, this is, this is what displeases my mom and dad, so I will not exhibit these emotions anymore. Now, what are the long-term effects of this? What are the long-term ramifications of this? This child who has faced this kind of a reaction from the parent will, number one, not understand emotions. Emotional intelligence will not be great. It's going to go down. It's not going to come to a level where they can understand and emote happily which means that they are not going to understand their emotions, number one. They will have a very negative connotation towards certain emotions. They might label anger as bad, jealousy as bad, and all of those emotions as just bad. Number three, they might just go in a shell and become avoidance, which means that whenever they are in trouble, they might just disconnect themselves and think that, okay, this is bad, what's going on, and I need to figure it out by myself. Let me not show anyone what I'm going through. And this is because this, this kind of a response is because what they faced when they were children, when they were toddlers. So we carry what we don't learn. Now I'm sure that the parents who are watching this video definitely want to learn a strategy on how to deal with meltdowns, emotional meltdowns of children. So here's your learning. Number one, understand your own pattern. The next time, the next time your, your toddler has a meltdown, I want you to just see what you're doing. Step back and see yourself doing what you're doing. So if you are the one who shouts, then you need to recognize that this is my primary style of dealing with my toddler tantrum. 
if you just beat them up again that's your primary style or if you emotionally disconnect that's your primary style so step number one be aware of your primary automatic response to your child's toddler tantrums your child's tantrums or meltdowns number one be aware number two now that you're aware decide on what you want to do that is decide how you can use a toddler's meltdown as a teaching moment i always tell my clients and even my students that a crisis moment is a teaching moment now that you've understood that the meltdown happens and this is how you normally react the step number two is what do i do about it how can i use this as a teaching moment for my child now to use this as a teaching moment all you need to do is calm down and you can show your child as you calm down so that the child can connect with you and learn and observe and learn what they are supposed to be doing during a meltdown because you are going to use a meltdown a crisis moment as a teaching moment where you will teach your child the most important skill and that is emotional regulation how to identify how to use your emotion and how to manage your emotion so that you can be in a good state that is emotional regulation now you are definitely not going to explain in this way you are going to show them because children or toddlers learn from observation or from modeling so when they look at you exhibiting it they will learn it so here's how you can do it and this is how i do for my toddlers also so when my toddler is having a tantrum or a meltdown number one i recognize that this can fire my own triggers once i do that what i just need to do is stop my emotional brain from going in the fight flight or freeze response how can i do that i count from five four three two one because it takes six seconds for the brain to go in a direction for the brain to react so i use those six seconds just to focus on the numbers five four three two one what do i do after that i take a deep breath i look at my toddler i look at them in the eye and then i smile and i take a deep breath and i make sure they see me taking a deep breath and i make it very funny and dramatic as well because they like drama they like color so look at them in the eye once you have done your 5 4 3 2 1 now just look at them and breathe in and do that in a dramatic way mostly what's going to happen is they are going to snap away from that negative uh, situation that they are in that meltdown and they are going to come back to a lighter mood but even if that doesn't happen still it helps because by doing that you are establishing connection instead of throwing back at them instead of teaching them or preaching to them or shouting at them or beating them or getting disconnected you are showing them connection that's the word the first step is connection look at them in the eye come down to their level breathe in breathe out show them again do that do it three or four times so that they can see you doing it now this has twin benefits number one they are understanding that if they have a emotional meltdown what are they supposed to do they're supposed to breathe they're learning that skill second it's having a calming and a soothing effect because now your reasoning brain which is your prefrontal cortex is now activated at this point of time you can actually navigate through the situation and teach them so the next step is now that you're calm now that your prefrontal cortex is activated now you hold them place your hands around them and if they're not allowing you it's okay respect their choice but mostly they will because by the time you have breathed in they have also breathed in they are little calmer just hold them look at them in the eye and just say i totally understand you i know what you're going through right now and it's okay to feel this way it's okay to be angry it's okay to be frustrated it's okay i get you and i'm with you assure them that you are with them the next step as you're talking to them and as you're assuring them you have connected with them second you have validated their emotion by saying that it's okay to feel angry it's okay to feel frustrated it's okay and you've told them that you are with them which means they are not alone you are there to guide them now as you're saying this and listen to this very carefully take your hand and just help them just pat them over their spinal area from this side all the way down to the tailbone just give them gentle sweeps 
gentle sweeps as you're looking at them and speaking to them. What this is going to do is, this is going to activate their energy blocks. Whatever energy blocks are there around their spinal area, that's going to go away. All the energy blocks are going to go away. And it's going to be cleared when you just help them just sweep the energy like this. As you do that, right from this area to the tailbone, if, as you keep doing that, they will have a soothing and a calming effect. They will experience your gentle love and gentle care. And in that peaceful moment, as they go through that, they will learn that they can respect their emotions and they can figure their emotions out. Now, as you're doing that, your child will also go in a state of reflection. And after a while, if you allow the child to be and just be with them, there's no need to teach them or train them any, anything. This itself is teaching and training. Just be with them. Allow them to go through the entire emotion. So when they're having a meltdown, the emotional peak is on high. Now, as you're, as you're allowing them to regulate their emotion by just being there and calming them, the emotional intensity will slowly go down and they will tell you what they want. Now, as you realize that the emotional intensity is going down and as the connection is deeper between you and them, now you ask them the question. Okay, so what is it that you want? What exactly happened to you? Can daddy help you? Can mommy help you? So what exactly happened? Can you tell me what's troubling you? Now you're having a, a conversation with them. So they have learned another skill that they can have a conversation about what's troubling them. That mommy and daddy are available for them. Because at this point in time, they want to know whether the people outside of them are with them or not. We are building relationships. So the moment that you show how secure they are, by asking them questions as to how can I help you? Is there something wrong? Can daddy do something for you? Can mommy do something for you? Do you want to talk about it? Or do you want to draw it out? Do you want to color a paper? Give them activities like that or ask them what is it that they want? And slowly do what they're asking you to do. Talk to them, maybe watch TV with them or calm them down. Now what's gonna happen is this requires patience, of course, but I'm sure if you are a parent, you will definitely want to do this because you're teaching your child emotional regulation. Now, here are the benefits of this. Number one, your child, as he grows into an adult, will do the same as you have taught them. Instead of reacting when they are adults, they are going to respond by calming themselves down, making sense of their emotions, and then talking reasonable stuff with people. Number two, when they're facing big emotions, instead, instead of keeping them inside, especially when people tell them to shut up, they just keep it inside. And then that goes into your body and creates all the toxic effect. Instead of that, they will learn to release. They will learn to release the big emotions. So as they grow up, probably they will release it as they go, to, as they find out that gym is a good practice for them or singing or dancing is a good practice for them. As adults, they will release it in that way. So instead of keeping any big emotions in, they will release it, which means they'll be healthy and that emotion is not going to trouble them anymore. Third, they will learn that you need to take time for yourself to deal with emotions and make your own meaning. So they will make meaning of the situation or emotions that they're going through and this way they will regulate their emotions. You might want to watch this video once again to understand this strategy and apply it. I'm here to answer any of your questions or queries. In this video, we have learned how to use a crisis moment of an emotional meltdown into a teaching moment. I've given you a technique. Go ahead and practice it. Let me know how it works for you. And if there's any more, or if you have any questions, or if there's any more queries that you have about this, or anything else to do with parenting of toddlers, you can put your question in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe this video and share it with your friends. Let us all do parenting which is very effective and emotionally healthy let's raise character strong children this is ajay almeda parenting coach and a boundary coach thank you for watching